Uh, weird, Matt. What's that? What painting? Painting is weird. The birth of Venus. It's weird. Just like, why is there? Is that a zephyr? Is that supposed to be a zephyr? Like the guy blowing wind? Like a wi wind gods are a thing, right? Um, you know what? I'm thinking about King's you know Quest what? You're right. way too much right now. <laughs> Because there are wind gods in King's Quest Seven. I've cheated and looked it up, and yes, it is Zephyr, and the person he is holding is Chloris, who yeah. is a nymph it, goddess really? associated with spring. Oh my um, god, I'm right. Yeah, good job. Thank you. I'm an uh, artist. <laughs> <laughs> I I do not remember the story of Venus. Like, I don't know what's happening here. Is Venus the no one that was clue. birthed from the sea after? After after Zeus jizzed in it? Was that it? Oh my god. Well, there's our cold open. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I want people to answer that. I want people to write us in and be like, yeah, Matt, you were right. What is the... That is what happened. So he doesn't jizz into the sea. Which okay. would be, that would be a weird thing to do, right? Yeah, why would you do that? I'm sure, I mean, the sea has existed... <laughs> for longer than humans and humans have existed for a long time definitely somebody has stood on the side of the sea and just <laughs> into it before <laughs> but, but... i'm sure so, you know captains have done it because their love is the <laughs> sea oh right God, their love is the sea <laughs> their love is the sea <laughs> they just have to give something back um <laughs> oh God. we're good at interpreting art Pushing Up Roses here. Welcome back to Save Your Game. With me, as always, the enigmatic, the effervescent, the, <laughs> the greatest jumper that there ever was, Matt Allcamp. Hi, Matt. Now, now I know you're talking about me. Yeah, hey. the other things were like, uh. <laughs> how's, how's it going, Roses? How's it going, audience? Audience, yeah, how going? are you? Uh, write us. <laughs> <laughs> To just say just how leave, you are. We just leave space for them to shout at their... <laughs> I was going to say iPods. That's not what... <laughs> <laughs> their iPod. What? Man, is this the, the 2005s? <laughs> I want... I, specifically, I want you to write in if you listen to us on an iPod. <laughs> or, a, or a Zune. A Zune, which was, yeah. And Zune, which was the superior MP3 playing device... For two but, seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I do you know I used to um I was such a big fan of the Zune that I, I always used to buy my iPods used and like I'd buy like two broken ones because they were too expensive <laughs> for me. So I'd okay. buy like two ones that were broken in different ways and I'd take them apart and I'd put the pieces together. That worked? So, so I'd have one working iPod. Uh yeah, most of the time it would. That's crazy. A lot of times, uh, the hard drive would get corrupted by whatever was wrong with the other parts, so it wouldn't work for very long, and then I'd have to buy another shitty iPod and take oh, the no! hard drive out. But anyway, so I stopped doing that with iPods and started doing it with Zunes, and so I held on to the Zune for way longer than anybody. Do you still have one? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think I still have the pieces of one somewhere in a nice. box in the closet, but um, I do not have a working Zune anymore. They this were reminds me yeah. of, of what you do with your glasses. Like, you refuse <laughs> to just buy a quality pair of glasses, so you Frankenstein <laughs> cheap glasses. <laughs> like, what? Yeah, I'll do that with a lot of stuff. I just did that with my couch. Um, so I had... <laughs> Makes me laugh. I don't know why. I that had was your couch. I had a love seat that was in two pieces. Um, I think my ex bought it from Wayfair, and that website is expensive. Okay, go on. <laughs> <laughs> well, my ex was rich. So oh, okay. I just need I to put that lot, out there. I have a lot of furniture from when we broke up and I moved out that she had bought me over time because she Damn. was just a rich person and didn't mind that I left with you know the furniture i was using because she's like i'll just buy more <laughs> like holy Jeez. shit <laughs> like must be nice dude yeah for real um but 
so I had this two piece love scene. It wasn't long enough, so I bought one. I bought the middle piece from the internet, got here, turned out it was wrong. It was like very oh, no. close. But the um but the the latches didn't fit together. And oh. this was just Ugh. this was just yesterday. So I had to like take it apart, drill new holes, unscrew the old latches, mm-hmm. use a uh like a chisel and a hammer to what the fuck? Pop out <laughs> <laughs> I know to pop out the the sockets for the screws, but like hammer them into the new holes, and like line them up correctly. And now, criminy, you would if if you don't notice the very slight difference in gray color difference in like the color of charcoal gray, <laughs> you, would, <laughs> you would never know this is two couches Frankenstein together. Matt, one day. One day, mm. when the podcast gets really huge, I'm going to buy you a new couch, and it's uh-huh. you don't have to Frankenstein. <laughs> you can just have one. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I, yeah. It, this is this couch is it's narrow. It is it's hard for like you can't really do the thing where you lay down with your partner, like you spoon oh, okay. with your partner on the couch and watch yeah. TV. Yeah, because like the butts don't both fit. Oh, that sucks. Like, the rest of the body fits, but it's just, like, a little too thin for both butts to fit (laughs) back to back. (laughs) Or front to back, whatever, you know what I mean. See, that's why the L couch would have been great. I'm sure it was huge. Yeah, it was huge! (laughs) It was like a cap you could... Cap. (laughs) It was like a couch you could nap on. And there's not like a ton of those. There's there's not unless you want a unless you want an even bigger one that like expand or you can get one that folds out. I mean, it, yeah, or it, it has to be u sized and or bigger, and it has to be comfy. Yeah, and then you can nap on it. <laughs> so, uh, you guys this may have noticed this is a podcast about video games. <laughs> That we're not actually talking much about video games, and that's because, and we're going to, we're going to talk about yeah. video games. Uh, but we decided that we just needed a bit of a more informal podcast this week. You know, we've been doing this every week. <laughs> that's pretty nuts. Like that, I to to have two people at different time zones, like very yeah. busy people. We have put out an episode every week, and I was having a bad week. Uh, and as I was I. Yeah, yeah. It is, it can be a drain, you know, mm-hmm. to sometimes, especially when we have something planned. And we always do, you guys. We always plan our topics beforehand. We're serious about like what we talk about. Yeah. Um. So I wanted, like, I almost wanted a full on break. I was almost yeah. like deflated to the point of like, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's very pathetic. But then I gave Matt a call and I felt better. And that we decided to just do an informal one instead. So you're just going to hear us informally talk about adventure games. <laughs> yeah, uh, I actually have been playing a couple games that I am really, really into. So I'm going to talk to you about those. And then we'll right? just talk about like some of our favorites and shit. Yeah, which I honestly, that's I love doing that from time to time. I just like thinking <laughs> about adventure <laughs> games sometimes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and just be like, you remember that thing? Remember that weird adventure game? <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. So have you been playing anything at all this week? I was meant to. Uh, so I can I can mention what I was going to play and that okay. I'm going to play this week. And that's Norco. I was gifted Norco for my birthday. Oh, awesome. And it was, uh, as far as I know, it was a game of the year, I think, in 2021. Uh, it, I think it was a game of the year, though. I'm pretty sure that's correct. It looks really cool. It's an adventure game. It looks, how can I describe it? It looks, um, it's pixely. Uh, it's mm-hmm. not, but it's like very smooth at the same time. It's like this very smooth looking pixel game. It's got a CRT filter on it. Okay. So it's smooth pixel art, but there is a, there's a CRT. Well, I think you can turn it off, but you mm-hmm. probably shouldn't because it's, it was meant to be, it was meant to have the CRT look to it. Yeah. You know what it looks like? It mm-hmm. kind of, it, and this might not be the best graphical comparison, but I'm looking at a screenshot that heavily, heavily <laughs> reminds me of Callahan's Cross Time Saloon. Almost, and I, I think if you guys have played that and you look at some of these screen caps, I think there's like a city New York screen cap that I'm looking at. I'm like, oh, 
that heavily reminds me of Callahan's. It's got that, you, you know, it's one of those games where the every scene is static in front yes, of you. Yes, just like Callahan's. That's the, yeah, it's all static. Yeah, you jump from like a yeah, you jump from a static screen to a static and like there's things moving in the screen, sure, but it's not like animations. you can't you can't move through the screen. Right. Um, you you have a, a you have like a little navigation tool in the bottom right of the screen that has bl- uh, like blocks showing you all the directions you can move. Yeah. And each block represents basically a different screen you're moving to. Yeah. So yeah. I kind of have a fondness for that. I really do. I have a fondness for those kind of old static screen adventures. And they, and they weren't just a, they weren't just in adventures either. Um uh, I think they did it a lot in kids' games. Have you played Matt? Have you played? <laughs> oh boy, have you played any of the Eagle Eye Mysteries games? No, I don't know these. Okay, these are games I played as a kid. They're lighthearted mystery okay. uh, games for children, and it was one of the first games I had that was talking for my computer. I had Sound Blaster at the time, and I was given this as a gift, and it was the first time I heard the computer talk and it was fucking amazing <laughs> um but yeah everywhere you go on those screens or they're just static screens with hot spots on them okay you know what i mean like you you see your character kind of on the side um and if people are talking to you you get thought bubbles and stuff like that and i i kind of dig that i kind of i kind of dig the static screen thing i think or those other games the legend games did that uh companions of xanth and i think Shan- shanara I never, I that, never know how to pronounce that name. Shannara? That is what this is. Yeah, you there's there's static screens with hot spots. There's some little animations in it. Um when you chat with people, you know, you kind of get like a little chat window with their head next to it. Yeah. Um yeah. you never see yourself. It's first person, so you never see you. Right. Um you are represented by a squiggly little uh like smiley face it's not smiling just like, like in real life <laughs> it's me um and you know it's it well i'm sure we'll talk about it when you actually play it so maybe i don't want to give anything away now but it it's a really interesting very narrative heavy game so yeah and i think the person who gave it to me i had just gushed about disco and i'm sure that was kind of the inspo for for gifting me this game because I, I can see there are some some similarities there and there are some narrative similarities yeah. to disco elysium and the other thing i would compare it to is this the game that i always talk about and for some reason often forget the name of <laughs> okay give me a hint it is you know it's uh, it reminds me of norco that's <laughs> is that a good enough hint? no <laughs> <laughs> Disco Elysium? <laughs> no, it's it's by the people who made In Other Waters. They also made Citizen Sleeper. Okay. I was playing Norco actually at the same time as I was playing Citizen Sleeper, and there was a lot of narrative threads that I could see between mm. the two. I would almost put if if Citizen if it was like a if it was like a little rainbow it'd be Citizen Sleeper and then Norco and then Disco Elysium. Yeah, yeah, yeah but not yeah, yeah. the Thaumaturge as we. No, that would be like <laughs> that would be the uh, the Disco Elysium part of the rain- rainbow, like reflected in a puddle of oil. <laughs> and Pokemon's there too. <laughs> <laughs> It's still always going to compare it to Pokemon. But yeah, that that was the game that I I had it booted up. But, you know, sometimes even gaming is exhausting when you have (laughs) just having a bad week. Um, So I mostly focused on art this week, but I am very I'm very excited to play uh, to play Norco. So that's what's on my radar. What have you been playing? (laughs) <laughs> okay oh boy. so I, i've been playing a couple things i don't know where to start um what's the what's your what's taking over your brain what's like i what is the game that you're playing that you're like man i can't wait to finish work to play this game that is that is one thing that is what i'm i might be saving for a second because first okay. let me go through let me go through the other two okay, okay. i have three. First. so i said i wasn't going to play the start until uh the update hit the switch Right. 
but you couldn't wait. <laughs> <laughs> well, because I, I love playing it handheld and I didn't want to play it on my desktop. Mm-hmm. But I I caved and I replaced my Steam Deck. You know, that's so, a good choice. I got the OLED Steam Deck and holy shit, Roses, this thing is so nice. So cool. If, oh my God. If, it's like the Steam Deck, right? It's got Steam on it, but it's a yeah. little it's a little lighter. And that's the biggest problem with the Steam Deck. It's it's bulky and it's heavy. So yeah. it like makes your hands tired. Yeah. But this is just the slightest bit lighter. And that makes all the difference. Plus, it's got this OLED screen, which is so so nice and oh yeah they're wild i saw the i saw the oled switches and they are gorgeous it looks so beautiful it's you wouldn't think this would make such a big difference but the 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 idea that the black is true black yeah is it's huge it's like a huge huge difference and No, no that makes a huge difference even just like thinking about paint i use you know, because I, there, right. I don't know if you guys know this, but there are actually different colors of black. There are different, you know, there's a cool black, there's a warm black, there's a light black without being gray, believe it or not. <laughs> yeah, true black is is dramatic and it'll make such a big difference in contrast. Yeah, and there's so many games that use black, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. And you're used to seeing it as a sort of a bluish color. And when it is straight up black, it just makes things look so much more beautiful. Plus, I mean, all the mm-hmm. colors pop a little more. Everything's a little bit sharper. Yeah. Um, so Stardew Valley looks gorgeous in it. Oh and I'm God. playing, obviously, the new update. There's a ton of new stuff. And a lot of just little things, which make life just, like, slightly easier. Yeah, I saw some of the, like, even, like, some of the practical things. Like, bigger chest boxes and, like... um why is that the only thing I can remember? What is wrong with me? Come on, roses. <laughs> you know, I haven't I haven't actually unlocked or I haven't like gotten to the bigger chests yet. But there's But are there animals? But are there new animals? Yeah, there's a bunch of new am- animals running around. Just, just like little critters. I mean, so there are new animals you can uh, get in your yeah. house and there are new fish. But there are also just like little more more little animals just running around as you're walking around. I like you just that. see like a little You'll see more little raccoons or uh, what do you, what do you call uh, the th- the things that are really ugly, but everyone thinks they're cute for some <laughs> Possums? reason. Possums. Yes. <laughs> How dare you? Possums are adorable, and we will not have this slander on on save your game. There's so many cute little design changes too. Like yeah. uh, everybody now puts up holiday decorations <laughs> for each oh. season. Um. Th- there's every river has these new waterfalls attached to them. Is there any like very big updates? Like, uh, uh like yes. I just thinking about the last update. Uh, it, what was it? Ginger Island was a huge update, right? Is there anything There's like an, that? Yes, yes. There are oh, new shit. Fest, there are new festivals. There are new NPC um interactions. Love there that. Is a there's a bookseller, and now there are books in the game, which either give you new powers that are also quality of life fixes right like yeah they uh they make you walk a little faster or love that <laughs> yeah right <laughs> or like r- things that were kind of obnoxious to do you just have you can like use these books to have little powers that make them a little easier uh yeah. there's mystery boxes there's a new type of tree there's new crops for each season love there's that. yeah Again, there's new fish. There's, there's, you can put hats on cats and dogs. There's so, <laughs> there's so much new stuff. And apparently, there's a lot of new late game stuff that I haven't even gotten to yet. So I played awesome. one year in the past week. Wow. And guess what, Roses? What? What? I did what? it! Community center in the first year. Oh, nice! Woohoo! <laughs> Which I've talked about on the show before, and I think I've, I think I implied that I, I think like I've talked to somebody that they got from when I said that I at least implied that I had done it before. I think it was before talking on the show that just it's possible to do it in the first year. Yeah, and I it want, is possible. 
and I want to do it in the first year, but I don't think I'd ever actually achieved it in the first year because of the red cabbage and some other things. Yeah, it's the uh, some of those star crops. It's hard to get the the super high quality crops. Oh, right, because when you're just adjusting to the game in that first year, you don't have your deluxe fertilizer yet, and yeah. all sorts of stuff. So, but I nailed it. I got it. Nailed first it. Year, uh, it was. I was actually worried <clears throat> because it wasn't until like winter, like seventeen. That finally my apple trees grew and I was able to put the apples in <laughs> yeah. the in the fodder yeah. bundle. So I, I then so then I spent the next the like the last eleven days or whatever of that season. I was like, you know what? Maybe I can also max out all my skills in the first year. Failed. Uh, uh, <laughs> I had that would be hard. That would be very difficult. Still had a nine in foraging and a nine in combat, and I spent the last like three days of that season just foraging and combating. <laughs> and I even found a foraging um experience book, which gives you an automatic like five hundred experience. Nice in in foraging. Yeah. And it's still, I still couldn't get there. It's so close. That's tough. No, that's tough, though. I feel like I didn't even, because I, I feel like I saved fishing for last. Although in my last playthrough, I wanted to make a lot of money very quickly. So I tried yeah. doing a lot of fishing. I still got sick of it. I'm like, no, that's okay. Well, that's I'm the good. thing. You just need to make so, in order to do this, you need to make so much money. Because yeah. you need to have so much shit. Like, you need to, you need to have stuff open and built yeah. Like, for example, you need a truffle, so you need a pig, so you need to have a deluxe barn. Right. Just a deluxe barn plus a pig. That's like that's a over lot of gold. Fifty thousand gold there by itself. Yeah. Um. Anyway, it was a lot of fun. It was really right. fun to go back and revisit Stardew Valley. I I probably will keep playing. I like. I want to get. I I kind of want to one hundred percent it again. It's been a while since nice. I've done that, but I felt really cool. That I, I don't know if I've ever 100%ed it. I've gotten incredibly close, uh, but I eventually just kind of burn out, I think, by the end. I'm just like, okay, that's that's enough of this. <laughs> Rose is every game I play, I romance all the characters and I give them all <laughs> flowers. <laughs> <laughs> you hound. What in so, the world? If you're, so this is a crazy thing about the game. So if you do that, when you've romanced all of them to, I think it's eight hearts is the highest you can get without marrying them. Without, yeah, without Maybe it's ten. Them. Maybe no, it's wait, ten I think and then you is... get to, f- it's ten and then you get to fourteen if you yeah, marry them. It's, it's ten. ten. What, what happens you is you them. can, you can marry them at eight, but you, but it still will go to ten. Oh, okay. So if you get all of them to ten, there is a scene uh, with them, if you get all the male characters <laughs> to ten, there's a scene in the in the what is it? The Star Drop Saloon. Yeah, the, the up Star Drop Saloon. Where, uh, if you walk into there in like the middle of the day after you've gotten everybody's <laughs> ten heart events, they will all be there together. Yep. And if you just stumble into that randomly. Mm-hmm. They all break up with you. They're all mad at you. you You're all with so all upset. Them. Harvey's and- the worst though, because he's like, because I've seen I've seen all the, okay. the the cuts. I don't I don't do this anymore. I used to romance <laughs> everyone and like divorce them and then erase their memories and then do it again. Oh, Harvey's nice. is the worst. He's like roses i thought we were gonna have a family together oh! down and have a family i'm like no <laughs> that, f- that fucking dork he's my least favorite to romance <laughs> i i got um, my guy elliot he's my man i like i like penny so yeah and with all the all the women when you romance them when you get all their 10 heart events it's at emily and Haley's house they're all yeah. gathered together and they all break up with you at once do you know the unless no, I don't know the unless. What's that? So it's unless you have oh? a rabbit's foot in your inventory oh, shit. at the time, and then you just hang out with all of them. That's amazing. And you I did keep not know your that. relationship with them. <laughs> <laughs> and just then you get mar- lucky. But generally, once you then you marry one, and nobody's mad at you for some reason. 
I, yeah, I've noticed that because like you can romance pretty high up there, and I'm just like, what happens? Like, I, I feel like these other characters should be feeling some kind of way. I know, I know, but they just but they just not. come to your wedding. <laughs> <laughs> they come to their boyfriend's wedding. <laughs> And they're just like they like clapping and celebrating. They're, yeah, they're dancing and clapping. I'm like, what? That's I have like eight hearts with Sebastian. I'm married to Ellie, and Sebastian's yeah, like, like, oh hey, roses. Like oh, Emily, whoa, I slept whoa, with you yesterday. You have no feelings about this. <laughs> you you have sex with Emily. You have sex with Sam. Do you have sex with any of the other characters before uh, you're married? Obviously. I think potentially they imply it with Elliot in the boat. Oh, okay. Because they're yeah, like, I mean, oh, the boat is shaking. Oh, I yeah. See. That's what. Remember? Yeah. That's it with Emily. Yeah. The, the oh, okay. tent is shaking. And with Sam, you're literally in his bed. Yeah. You're just um, literally in there. It's like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. With Penny, Penny has like the sexiest one where she invites you out to that, the the spa. Yeah. And then she shows up and she's like, you know, in her bathing suit. And she's like, which you've only ever seen her so buttoned up. And she's yeah. like, hey, come here. And she. Good Lord. It's, yeah. And then it's like, holy shit. And I think she kisses you and then it fades to black. And it's like, oh, God damn. You better hope nobody else walks into this. <laughs> I know. Oh, scandalous. <laughs> I know. I know. Like, oh, man. Penny, lady in the streets, huh? <laughs> oh, God. Okay. We need, we need to Okay, they yeah, we gotta move on. We gotta move on. Okay, what that's, else have you been playing? That's Stardew. Uh, okay, so then the other thing that I'll that is, <laughs> can you believe <laughs> this is the one I didn't want to talk them like as much about? Okay, so the other thing is the quarry. I've been playing it with my with my partner. Um, Look that up real quick. It is a. I I thought it was FMV for a long time before I played it, but it's not. It's just uh, really s strongly uh, like mo capped actors. Right, right, right. Um, we've 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 talked about this before. And really I, I real, yeah, yeah. I think really realistically drawn, like three D, like very cinematic really? looking. Because it looks like, it, it looks rotoscoped. It looks hyper realistic. I mean, it's it's three D, so it's. And it's very hyper realistic, and it is uh, it's like a, a choose choices matter kind of game. Okay, okay. Um, and it is your you know standard. A bunch of kids are at a summer camp, and then some weird shit starts happening. Story. Yeah, it's one of the. It's like a. It's like a Stranger Things archetype, right? Yeah, sort of. Um, like a Stephen King esque. Yes, I, I, yes, I, absolutely. King. Yeah. And it is very, very well written. The acting ranges, like, mm -hmm. I I'll talk about that in a second, but the acting, I think, is very, very good. Um, and there's some really famous actors. There's, like, um... Uh, you see what, David Arquette. Is there's David it. Arquette, yeah. There's the guy from... The, the, the kid from Detective Pikachu. What's that guy's name? Justice... Uh, Justice Smith. I thought that I was it, but then I was like, Smith is such a, <laughs> Smith is such like the, I don't know the last name, <laughs> the yeah. last name. Um, Brenda Song, Brenda Song's in it. Mm, it's. It's cool. It's really, really good. It's very, okay. The horror, I don't know, works as well as it should. It, it There are parts mm. where it does, especially towards the beginning, um, but this is also why this is also my complaint about the acting because mm -hmm. I think the acting is very, very good, but the problem is to pace it out in this game, in this like video game way. Uh, it's like something absolutely crazy happens and then they need a down moment. Mm -hmm. So instead of everybody going like, what the fuck, what the fuck? You just lost a hand. Everybody's like, okay, he just lost a hand. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what are we doing now? And everybody's like, like starts joking with each other again and okay. like quipping about the situation or moving on to solving the next problem. And it's really, it really like snaps you out of it. Like it, it breaks yeah. the momentum really strongly. There's also because it is like hyper realistic, it's very mm -hmm. uncanny valley to me. And I'm not sure how I feel yes. about that. There's a lot of uncanny valley where you have to read characters' expressions and they don't their expressions don't quite look human. So yeah. you're kind of like <laughs> they are they mad or are they 
are they like sneering or are they laughing? It's hard to tell. And there's a thing that me and my partner lose our fucking minds about where there's this one, there's this one character in the game. Uh, I believe her name is Emma. Mm -hmm. uh, I I'll look up the actor. It's her name's Emma and the actor is Halston Sage. Okay. Uh, which I, I hadn't seen in anything. She looks like a little familiar, but I, I think she, uh, I think she plays Dazzler in one of the X Men movies. Um, she does not look familiar to me. She's done a lot of like kid stuff, though. I see, like Nickelodeon stuff. Okay, okay. Yeah. So she's got a normal sized mouth, right? You're looking at her. You're like that person. For what, even if it's a little big, it's a normal human sized mouth. Yeah. Well, in this game, it opens up to the size of like a, a like a quarry itself. It is such, <laughs> it is an inhumanly large <laughs> mouth, and you can't stop thinking about how like her own head could fit inside that mouth. <laughs> is it supposed to be scary? No, it's supposed to. I think it's just Uncanny Valley. I think they okay. were just. Oh, okay. I think oh, they were just no. motion capping, capping, uh, you know, Halston Sage or whatever. And there's just just a <laughs> slight miscalculation with the mouth physics, <laughs> and it looks like it looks like she's trying to like Hoover in the the <laughs> her surroundings. I I felt like very similarly about La Noir because that was also you know mocapped and. And that and, and in that game, it's pretty important to read people's mm -hmm. expressions, and they try really hard. And I'm like, are they constipated? I don't know. I doubt. I don't know. <laughs> um, that that uncanny valley stuff is is wild to me. I've never thought about that before. What if? Okay, you're an actor on a project, mm -hmm. and you're not supposed to be constipated, but you <laughs> are. Like just that day, you just are. <laughs> How does that inform your character work? <laughs> Man, we ask the hard-hitting questions on Save Your Game. <laughs> yeah, we should be on In the Actor's Studio. <laughs> yeah, we, we should, should like, be the interview. Uh, what is he was famous for asking what's your favorite curse word we would be famous for asking what do you do if you get constipated on set? <laughs> yeah what do, you, what do you do about that do you like keep does that calm? inform your character do you do <laughs> this like, your character is constipated or do you pretend <laughs> are you acting as if you're not constipated as if you're <laughs> shitting all the time okay so just to put a bow on the quarry thing um i i, I do want to say that there's another cool thing about the game which is you can't out clever it which you know, as adventure gamers, we try to do a lot. Um, mm -hmm. And horror movie watchers try to do this a lot because horror movies are always trying to subvert your expectations. Yeah. Or often, right? Yeah. So when it's like, when somebody tells you don't shoot unless you know who you're aiming your gun at, mm -hmm. and you just hear a rustle in the woods, sometimes you, the player, are like, they're trying to get me. That's a fucking monster. They want me to remember not to shoot because you hear us because you don't know what you're aiming at. So I'm going to shoot it. And then you're inevitably going to shoot your friend. So like, oh, Lord, so don't, over, you can't overthink it, right? Like if it's yeah. like, do you want to uh, leap for safety or try and fight back? You might be like what they want. They want me to think leap for safety, but I right. bet if I fight back, it'll get no leap for safety. Like be and it, it, which is so funny because as horror movie watchers, we are often like yelling at the screen for them to do the obvious thing. Like, yeah, no, yeah. run away. <laughs> this yeah. game takes advantage of that feeling by being like, as a player, you kind of want to do the not obvious thing, but that's going to get you killed. Do the obvious right. thing. Run away. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's so, which is such a smart impulse on the game's part. Like, yeah. Anyway, so that's the quarry. It's really cool to play it uh, co-op because you each pick multiple characters. Like you say, oh. there's two people playing and there's eight characters. And uh -huh. it'll it'll give you each four characters and the game divides it up into scenes by character. So it'll be like player two. Uh, and it's a Ryan scene. And so player two plays that's Ryan. Cool. And then it'll be like, oh, it's an Emma scene now. Player one. And it pat and like... Which is funny because depending on how you pick, sometimes you'll get like five player two scenes in a row. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, what is it, my turn? <laughs> based on who you pick. But it's, yeah. yeah, 
it's a really kind of cool way to do this kind of thing. That's awesome. Okay. Now that that now that I know you can play a co op, I might I might pick it up. Uh, pick it up with somebody. All right. What is the oh, what please. is the what is the game that you have been holding off on? So it's so it insane <laughs> that I haven't even discussed the big game that I've been playing yet. I, I I just went on so long about those two games, but I have not talked to you yet about Animal Well. Animal Well. Yep. I knew I knew that was coming. And I know every video game podcast right now is talking about Animal Well. And he, here's one of the things. I don't want to talk too much about Animal Well. That's fine. Yeah. And uh, for anyone who doesn't know, this is a Metroidvania game uh, created by a dude named Billy Basso. You play just like a little blob egg guy. Um, in And running around this like Metroidvania world, it's all underground. You're in an animal well. <laughs> There's animals everywhere <laughs> and you're in a, and you're in like an underground wet series of tunnels. Okay. Um, and you can play it just as a Metroidvania. Yeah. You go around you um or as the uh as the Japanese call it a search action game. Mm-hmm. You run around um you find your progress gated in certain ways by by obstacles and then eventually you'll find items that'll help you get over that obstacle. Yeah. There's no double jump, there's no dash. You and there's get... no you said there's no combat, yeah? <laughs> so there is i would say yes there's no combat but there are things that are very similar to combat later on in the game okay, there are bosses it. but you have to out clever them you don't you don't hit them you don't get a you don't have a weapon is it like so, undertale where you can kind of choose th- no, where you can no, like, no no okay got it got it no 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 um there's yes you just have to uh, you have to use the environment okay so it's more like um make like a like a like a like a Nintendo boss, right? Um mm-hmm. where you're looking around in the environment and seeing and and looking at the boss's patterns and seeing right how the boss reacts with the environment and what you can lure them into doing. Yeah, or like a, a Zelda. It's not always yeah. combat in Zelda. You have to kind of get a hot spot or lure them to do yeah. something. Yeah, and I think people have discussed for a long time whether Zelda games are Metroidvanias or whether they're adventure games or whether they're their own kind of games, and I think they're a little bit of all of that. Yeah, they're but, definitely hybrid. So so you can play it just as a Metroidvania, and you will have a lot of fun, and you'll discover that it is, um, and it, the game's beautiful, by the way. Um, yeah, it's it pixel is. I looked art. it up. It's it's gorgeous pixel art, but y- you'll discover that as you as you play that it is a really clever Metroidvania again based on puzzles, not combat. Um, yeah. Every screen, you got to you got to think your way through it, and when you find a new object, you have to think of non traditional. You have to think of the traditional ways to use that object, and remember mm-hmm. all the places you can use it. But you can also you also have to think of non traditional ways to use that object. Every object can be used in multiple ways. So on that layer, perfectly fun, fine game. But as you're playing, you're going to discover some things. You're going to, every now and then, while trying to solve a puzzle, maybe go a little extra, like solve it in a, in a little bit of an extra difficult way or notice some other extra difficult aspect of the puzzle that you then go solve. And mm-hmm. you'll come across an egg. And you'll realize, oh, I guess I can collect these eggs. Wait, and is this like Pokemon again? <laughs> it's definite okay this one is definitely not like pokemon all right cool <laughs> checking <laughs> so throughout the game it, it, you know like uh, and this is another thing typical of many metroidvanias like the late game or the end game is often like going around finding collectibles right yeah yeah so you're finding these eggs but these eggs also sometimes unlock other abilities i don't again i don't want to get too deep into this yeah, no, it's fine. So there's the second kind of level to it where you're unlocking, you're you're going through these really intense, really thoughtful, um, sometimes, you know, world-spanning puzzles, trying to find or, you know, un- like solve puzzles that get you these eggs. Yeah. As you're doing that, though, Roses, <laughs> you'll find... There are yet more levels to this game. 
Okay. And deeper, you'll start to notice there are symbols that are familiar or look like other symbols that you've come across. And you'll be like, wait, I wonder what that means. You'll start to notice noises that maybe happen at a very specific time intervals. You might notice that there are certain animals that you see around the world that do not seem to interact. They do not seem to have anything to do with either the general exploration puzzles or the eggs. And there might be something even more mysterious to them. Oh, I like that. I like a game that's deeper than it initially looks. So I've heard of, I can't find it, but I've heard that there's a website that's like, has everything in animal, has every secret in animal well been discovered? And it's like mm-hmm. one of those websites that just says yes or no. And that's it awesome. just says no. Uh, I can't find the website, <laughs> but no. I heard on a podcast that it exists, uh, which is is very funny. Billy Basso specifically says I he's hidden puzzles in this game so deep that he doesn't expect anyone to ever solve them um oh that sounds like a challenge you can't have, say that to the internet <laughs> and you know i've heard that there are puzzles that require literally dozens of people to solve meaning mm-hmm. there are uh pieces of each a, a puzzle in each game like each game has its own individual piece of the puzzle and you need to collaborate with other people to solve it. Oh, I um, see. Oh. Sorry, sorry, sorry. My phone went off. Sorry, sorry. everyone. It's my bad. It's not but important. Go on, Matt. <laughs> this game is unbelievable. It, it To play it, just, again, as a Metroidvania, super fun, super kinetic, super uh, thoughtful. To play it for its secrets is uh, you know, people have used this word um, Metroidbrania. Have you ever heard that term? <laughs> I've never heard of that, no. <laughs> it's a I bad it, term, though. but the idea about it is like, rather than your progress <laughs> gated by abilities, your progress is gated by knowledge. So there's things okay. like, for example, the best the best example is in Super Metroid, right? Um, you could always wall jump, but yeah. 90% of players won't know that until they see those little yellow creatures that you follow. Mm-hmm. bouncing off the walls and then you're like i wonder if i could do that yeah and then you do it and you're like oh i could have done this the whole time um <laughs> a lot of times people call uh like the er example of the metroid brainia is metroid outer <laughs> i know outer wilds where okay. it's like everything's there if you know if you know about it you could have you could just like beat that game in five minutes right yeah um but the thing that you unlock is the knowledge as you go forward. And so Animal Well, while it has, again, Metroidvania stuff, like there are items that you find and they grant you abilities to pass obstacles. It's also this other thing where there is stuff from the very first screen that you don't even know to look for. Sure. That every single i don't i i can't even i can't say it enough every screen in this game has some sort of mystery in it that is deep and rich and satisfying and it like just makes you feel like a genius when you solve it <laughs> nice i would highly suggest uh, this this is a game i would recommend to everybody because you can yeah. again you can play it on every level you can play it just as a platformer and you can play it as a puzzle game mm-hmm. you can play it as this deep deep mystery um, but I would highly suggest do not use a guide. Like, oh, see, sometimes we sometimes we actually encourage people to use guides, but not this time, right? And I think that is one aspect of these Metroid Brainias, right? Is this idea that if your progress is gated by knowledge, if you just go look up that knowledge, mm-hmm. then there's there's no. I I don't think you'd have fun because there's no game there. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't want to criticize, again, anybody for the way they play a game, but I just think if you you play a game like this um, with a guide, Mm -hmm. you're just going to not understand what's good about it. You're just going to be like, well, that was boring, (laughs) right? Uh, Because there's nothing there for you. The interesting thing is the discovery. So... Absolutely. I Honestly, about. I played mm-hmm. I played Stardew without a guide the first time because wow. that was yeah. my foray into gaming like that. I hadn't played games like Animal Crossing yet or 
Harvest right. Moon or just any any or Farmville, just anything like it. <laughs> sure. I didn't even know guides were a, kind of an integral part of Stardew Valley. And it's that exploration that I think sealed the deal for how much I ended up loving that game. Right. Just every yeah. discovery was like magic. I think there is a lot of magic in Stardew. Once you kind of break through that magic, I think you'd need a guide in Stardew to like figure yeah. out when fish breed and like <laughs> yeah. when they're when you can get certain fish in certain areas. But like For sure. Um Yeah, so anyway, that's Animal Well. It is nice. blowing my fucking mind. This is like the most glowing review mm. I've heard in a while, <laughs> actually. I am about uh i'm 11 hours into it i've already rolled credits on the game so i've already beat the like whole metroidvania part yeah um i think i'm like 50 eggs in i think i've found 50 eggs okay i you know what i was gonna say what else i have discovered but i think it'd be a spoiler because yeah, you see yeah. one of these things early on and you don't even know it's a secret so okay there is a if if you've played it, there's another secret that you collect after the eggs, mm -hmm. and I have found three. Um, so I'm pretty deep into it, but I, so, I there's a there's a part of me that feels like I'm still just scratching the surface. Like nice. I've revealed probably ninety nine percent of the map, and I still feel like I there's so much I don't even understand, and there's still puzzles. To come across puzzles this late in the game that I'm like, oh, I don't think I know how to do this yet. I'll come back to this is yeah. wild. If anyone at home plays Animal Well based on this recommendation or is just playing it anyway, please write in. I want I want to talk more about Animal Well. Uh, I might even yeah. like email you privately so we can solve some of these Animal Well. <laughs> hey, there you go. <laughs> so that we can solve some of these Animal, animal Well. And I'll puzzles. be there animal too. Well. Yeah. yeah. I'll be like, um, hey guys, what you talking about? <laughs> uh, nothing. <laughs> Sports. Sports. <laughs> Amazing. Um, all right. So that's all the games I have to talk about in this free for all Yay. fucking episode. <laughs> it really I'm, is. You know, I really feel like like it's like such a good week for us to have this free for all episode because I had you know, I like, I don't know if I could have gone through this episode not gushing about at least Aww. Animal Well and Stardew. Oh, I heard, I knew that was going to happen. I knew <laughs> you were going to gush about Animal Well and I was, mm -hmm. I was ready for it. I'm just like, all right, sell me on this game. Matt is very good on selling me on a lot of games. <laughs> I try not to <laughs> recommend games that don't suck. <laughs> <laughs> That's our whole thing. Like we're trying yeah. to champion these, these great great games and great experiences and this is you know this is a genuine like one dude developed it and yeah. one dude published it right like this is a that's wild this that's is just crazy indie as hell right um yeah. and stardew valley is indie as hell like yeah, granted is. concerned ape is like a millionaire now but he's still one guy yeah so. that it's wild that he does these updates for free i just what a guy what a guy yeah. yeah i guys i have still not booted up stardew because i i think i mentioned this in a few of our podcasts i really did just finish a game like late last year and i i just don't i don't want to grow more parsnips again i don't want to do the community center again <laughs> i just did it so uh i don't know it might be a little bit before i check out the updates but we'll see we'll see what happens all right, so should we do the music and then kind of just chit chat about some some adventure games, <laughs> some more adventure yeah. games? Yeah, yeah, chat, chat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's do it. All right, I'm sorry. What was the name of the song again, Matt? The name of the song? Banksy rocks Amino. Yeah, that's it. Hey everyone, welcome back to Save Your Game. Welcome back, Matt. Thank you. Welcome back to you. Th th thanks. <laughs> welcome together. Welcome. <laughs> Did you have a good break? I had a great break. I'm very happy to hear that. How about you? Well, 
I had a good break. You know, I've been feeling very nostalgic lately towards adventure games. I don't know why. I I mean, actually, I think there is a solid reason why that I'm kind of glossing okay. over here. Um, I recently did a video for my channel on why I stopped reviewing adventure games. And so I had to... I was just kind of recalling and remembering all of these games that I had reviewed over time. And, mm -hmm. you know, I used footage from all the games that I had captured over the many years of doing it. And I was just like, oh, I'm actually feeling uh -huh. a little wistful for, for some of these. And that, that doesn't mean I'm going to go back to doing retro gaming. Keep in mind, I didn't say I wouldn't review new indie games. So... <laughs> people may be surprised to see like you know a last door review or a dredge review or something of that nature interesting okay yeah yeah yeah, yeah. um but in terms of the retro stuff i i really feel like i did everything that i could do um mm. and i'm not saying i covered every game i didn't uh people are still upset that i didn't cover the remaining you know quest for glories which are a chore to cover by the way okay. yeah, uh yeah just to capture in general um some of those <laughs> but yeah. i i really think i made a lot of i don't know i think i did a lot of adventure game reviews and i don't know i was just thinking about home of the underdogs and like playing adventure games as a kid now answer me this question so i had a computer when i was young when i was very young because my aunt had a computer and i, I was jealous of it she had a computer she had a tandy that could play king's quest 3 and space quest 1 I right. was very excited by this. And so she gifted me a computer when I was very, very young. And this was in the early 90s. So nobody had computers at this time, you guys. Not personal computers. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. People were, my friends, like kids, were playing console gaming. Because you had uh, Super Nintendo. You had Nintendo, of course, Super Nintendo, and the Sega Genesis. And here I am with a, with a fucking Tandy. <laughs> and I really, honest to god thought that was normal so i would try to talk to my friends about king's quest not even realizing that king's quest 3 had already been out for like five mm. or six years mm. right, i'm right. playing it as like a five six year old no of course it's not normal <laughs> nobody else is playing this like i yeah. felt i felt so alone but like in my brain i thought this was like normal i thought that loving computers and loving uh, computer games and adventure games was something that everyone did because I just couldn't fathom not like right. what like what's your experience with that did you like have friends that you could talk to about adventure games with no I didn't um so I I remember I I don't know yeah I I had Monkey Island Secret of Monkey Island on a com on like my family gateway computer yeah uh and I remember playing it when I was, uh, I guess, like seven mm -hmm. um, and then getting really into it when I was uh, maybe like nine. Yeah. And tr like <sighs> some part of me knew that nobody else knew what I was talking about. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I don't think I ever I don't think I ever had a conversation where I was like, hey, you know. Uh, you know, that game Monkey Island, right? Like. I just knew no one would know it. I, I, yeah. don't, I don't know how. I just intuited that as a kid. And I intuited it correctly. Because I'd like kind of bring it up. I'd be like, yeah, I like these games. Um, I don't know. There's one like like Monkey Island. Did you ever hear of that? And people were like, no. And I was like, no. yeah. yeah, I, <laughs> of, yeah. Course, of course you didn't. <laughs> I was pretty alone in my adventure game fandom. I tried to turn a couple people onto them as a yeah. kid. But everybody was interested in playing you know whatever doom or or just console games i feel like because those were becoming uh, very popular like i said i i also had a sega genesis at the same time and i i loved it just as much to be to be honest uh, for different reasons because i could play you know platformers on my genesis but yeah i i feel like it was even worse for me because i'm going off of five-year-old that have already been out like king's mm -hmm. quest games <laughs> Like, I do know some people that kind of like you who loved Monkey Island as a kid. I don't know any who loved King's Quest 3. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think even I would have felt that way, right? Like, I remember a couple people saying, like, oh, like, King's Quest. I'd be like, no, 
no. not like King's Quest. Because for me, I, I, like I've talked about this before, I came, fr- I'd come from like being a huge fan of comic books, even as a little kid. And yeah. there was the big Marvel versus DC thing. So to me, you were either going to be a LucasArts guy or a Sierra guy and you had to hate the other one, right? Yeah. Um, which is silly. Oh, but... yeah. I always found that silly because when I was young, I just wanted to find any adventure games I could and play mm-hmm. them. And it didn't matter what company it was. That's uh, how that's I felt. How you find the weird ones. <laughs> <laughs> that's definitely how I felt later. But, you know, yeah, I think... Um... I I don't think I knew anyone that like liked King's Quest, but I yeah. knew a bunch of people that knew what it was. <laughs> yeah. And no one that knew what the LucasArts games were. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I was really young, like I said, when I got into these games. So mm-hmm. I wasn't really aware of companies. That just mm-hmm. wasn't, you, you don't think about that. The same way you watch movies as a kid and you don't care who the director is or who the company is. So I just wasn't thinking about it. So I would just go on Home of the Underdogs and <laughs> just kind of gauge by graphic style if I would like it or not. Yeah. You know? So if it's got that really pixely look to it, uh, like Monk Island 2, a lot of, we were just talking about this, a lot of games took inspiration from the aesthetic of Monkey Island 2. Oh my god, yes. Uh, I mean, even still, games are taking visual inspiration from Monkey Island 2. Yeah. I remember I just brought up that game. Uh, Touche. It's called Touche, mm-hmm. the Adventures of the Fifth Musketeer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, it looks like Monkey Island. It's about the Fifth Musketeer, apparently. But I you found look it at that game boring. even even now. You look at that game and you're like, I'm gonna love this game. I know. Isn't that so disappointing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That happened to me so many times on Home of the Underdog because we do like. Especially with adventure games, though, we kind of judge with our eyes a little bit and we get excited uh, for mm-hmm. characters and fantasy and, and stuff like that. Um, and there were so many times when I would download a game. and I'm like, what is this? Or what it just wouldn't this? download. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Touche was just kind of uh, not memorable for me. Yes. Uh, I had to like really recall it in my brain when I was like thinking about all these adventure games that I had played. I don't know. I, played, I, might, I could make yeah. an exception for a review on this one, to be honest with you. <laughs> it's I, so I didn't. Weird. I never played through Touche. Like I played a little bit of it. Yeah. And was like, ah, this is kind of boring. I'll come back to it. And then I think just never did. There was a game, uh, and again, this is this is all like coming, like flooding back to me as I think about all the games that I tried to play through mm-hmm. Home of the Underdogs. Uh, do you remember a game called The Gene Machine? by name but i do not i don't think it's a game i ever played yeah um, i never got it to run so i never played it but it's it's <laughs> it's one of the games that's deeply embedded into my brain of okay have wanting to play it like so badly you know uh, I, I have a game like that too uh but talk about the g machine and i'll talk about mine i don't even know what the heck it's about I, i'm looking at it now and i'm like this is kind of ugly <laughs> Why did I, yeah. why did I want this again? Uh, it's a little, yeah, it's a little, it's a little weird. <laughs> like it's got the, the, um, the, there's like cartoony character graphics with like yeah. kind of clunkily painted background graphics. And it yeah. looks like there's some uh, really adult stuff in this game. Yeah, and it's supposed to be a little, it's supposed to be kind of sci-fi-ish, kind uh-huh. of Jules Verne-y, with like these, kind of these incredible things that you're, that you're working with. And and I, it, right. when I was a kid, I really liked Around the World in 80 Days. I liked that kind of, of fantastical sci-fi. Uh, but now that I'm looking at it again, hmm, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> the screen caps must have been amazing yeah. <laughs> when I was a kid, because now I'm just like, oh, I don't know if I would like this. The character designs remind me of a much worse. Um, oh, what's it called? Oh gosh, the Jordan Mechner game. Uh, the the train when you're on the train. Oh, um, the Last Express. The last, yes, the Last Express. Um, that which the last that. the Last Express was rotoscoped. It was rotoscoped. Yeah, 
This does not look rotoscoped. It is not. That's why, to me, it just looks, like, worse. It looks like yeah. really bad rotoscoping. Right. <laughs> um, oh, well. So the game that was this for me was Orion Burger. I <gasps> oh, my God, me too. Are you I serious? Remember, yeah, I remember seeing it in a magazine um, and just keeping that magazine forever. Like, I'm going to get this game one day. I'm going to get this game. And for just never seeing it at the video game store. And, like, I was yeah. a kid, so I didn't know how to find it. Like, I, I still don't know when it came out. Uh, and I think it, yeah, uh, probably came out, yeah, probably came out while I was waiting for it. Because it looks like it came out in 1996, and I just didn't know it was out. That's um, pretty, uh, that's pretty late for Adventure Games, yeah. 1996s. And when I was older, I remember downloading it, and I just could not get it to run. Yep. And then I kind of forgot about it, because I don't Same. think it was a well-loved adventure game i it must not have been but but we both seem to have really wanted to play this game when yeah. we were young i had the same thing i think i might have found it on home of the underdogs couldn't get it to run because we were at that time in the <laughs> mid 90s where nothing ran on anyone's computer ever yeah um i i feel like i recall at one point recently and when i say recent i mean in the last maybe seven years i did mm -hmm. get it to run Okay. And was so disappointed. It wasn't good. I don't remember it being good. No. This is the feeling I had about uh, Inherit the Earth, Quest oh, for the Orb. That sounds very familiar. It's like an animal game. Um, and apparently I think it has like a real big furry fan base online. Um, oh, yeah. I do. I do remember. I, I remember this game. Yeah. Yeah. And it looks really great just from yeah. screenshots uh it's just so boring it's one of those games where no. you have to walk for 20 minutes before you get to your next screen do you think maybe we've been uh, kind of spoiled in a sense by all these new like indie games because like there i i have tried to introduce my friends to older adventure games right and they're just mm -hmm. like, this is boring. Like you're just walking around. <laughs> but see, my nostalgia is carrying it. You know what I mean? I'm on, I'm on Blood Island and Curse of Monkey Island. I'm so happy to be on Blood Island, and and people who yeah. grow up with it are like, I don't really understand. And I wonder if we had had nostalgia for Orion Burger or Inherit the Earth, uh, the Earth would we feel differently? Well, about I think it? quality generates nostalgia too. Um, yeah, that's true. Like I, I, I think. Okay, I I feel two ways about this. Number one, quality, like, yeah, quality that generates nostalgia. You're not going to be nostalgic for something that absolutely sucked unless it had something about it that, yeah. like, it needed to catch your eye and needed to catch your interest back then in order yeah. for it to stick with you this long. For sure. Um, so there are plenty of games I'm sure we played as kids that do not trigger our nostalgia because there was nothing about them that interested us. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, on the other hand, um, I don't see anything wrong with the idea that like games have gotten better and some of these just aren't worth playing anymore, right? Oh, like yeah. I, I like when you say, "Are we spoiled?" Like, yeah, maybe, but that's a good thing, right? It's good that we don't have to play Inherit the Earth Quest for the Orb, <laughs> a <laughs> shitty adventure game, just to get our fucking like uh fix right like that we can play better adventure games and get the experience we're looking for we don't have to like scramble around in the dirt for something worse yeah. because yeah. just because there's nothing else there honestly you're hitting a really good point there because when i was playing adventure games and i was on home of the underdogs that is what it felt like like i needed because mm -hmm. i loved adventure games so much yeah 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 i would just go to to not great ones because i just wanted to find something to play you know i yeah no i had the same experience i just yeah. wanted to play more of this stuff and it turned out there was not more like <laughs> those lucas arts games <laughs> and that, yeah. that's just that's just the thing that i eventually had to come to grips with is like there were these for me like nearly perfect whatever 11 games yeah and I I loved them so dearly, 
and then there there like if i wanted to play more games like this which i could they just weren't going to be the same so like the sierra games i was going to learn to i was going to enjoy a lot of them but yeah. it was not going to be the same as the lucas arts games and then i could go off and i could play run run away mm-hmm. and you know i was going to be able to combine objects walk around explore a world talk to characters and it just was like it would give me that fix, but I, it wasn't gonna be good, right? Yeah, um, I, that that was another problem. Is like the quality on some of these games were so disappointing, yeah, that you almost had to like keep looking. That's mm-hmm. how I felt, at least. I'm like, well, gotta scroll in the grand adventure genre again, yeah, on yeah. Home, or it just wouldn't run, um, or it would run. But it wouldn't come with voice acting because that was a CD-ROM <laughs> thing at the time. So yeah. I, yeah, the first time I played Callan's Cross Time Saloon was without, uh, without voice, and I don't even, man, like I thought it was a good <laughs> game without the voice, and then I played it with the voice, and my mind was blown. I'm like, this is so good. The the thing is, there is a never ending well of art out there to enjoy. That does yeah. not mean that there is a never ending well of quality art out there to enjoy, right? Like there yeah. are, you know, maybe now there is that we've been, you know, that the world is so big and art is so accessible to make, and there has been, you know, so many, <laughs> uh, so so much time and of like culture existing right but just because you yeah if you find something you like that doesn't mean that there's a never-ending source of it that you just have to find right yeah there might be nothing like it right like i don't know but incidentally it all is kind of coming back with people with modern i guess modern indie game devs who are our generation who Mm -hmm. were probably doing the same thing (laughs) like where can i find more of this type of of game this type of lucas rc <laughs> game or this kind and, of you yeah. know king's quest game it's funny because you do still see that all the time um you still see people starting kickstarters almost on like a daily basis of like i want to go back to the old point and click adventure games because that i played when i was a kid and i loved mm-hmm. um maybe these people don't realize that there have been quality point and click adventure games being made for <laughs> yeah, uh, made for years now. Like so many people had that same experience of like, there's just not as many of these as I want there to be. Yeah. That at this point there kind of is. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Uh, and they're just, they're all modern. Yeah. It, which arguably is better because now we can actually play them. <laughs> yeah. And we can play them and they're good. Now I do think that game preservation uh, is a problem i do think that we as a society are not very good at game preservation companies yeah. don't put enough money into preserving their games the way that they put into preserving their uh way like companies put into preserving movies or yeah, music movies, music yeah. or any other piece of art people do not put that sort of love into games i mean if you think about it it's such a, it's it's really a new a newer media than other things, mm-hmm. music and movies and, and art, like art and right. Visual arts in general that we've had around for centuries. Right. Yeah. It is new on that grand scale. And I just, mm-hmm. I don't think people always thought about this as art. You know, you think yeah. back about some of the, the early consoles like the Atari. And I don't think people were like looking at it that way. You know, this is just that we're developing a game and it's going to be great and people are going to play it and we're going to profit on it. And now it's it's becoming more of an appreciated form of art. Yeah. And, and I don't I don't I don't exactly know what the solution is to that. Right. Like, yeah, video games are losing like the, <laughs> we just saw the closure of how many video game studios just this week yeah Um, the week that we're recording this and if they can't put if people can't put the money into new games how do people put money into the preservation of games yeah um and yeah Uh, there are games i swear that i don't think i would have ever found if not people going hard on the internet to try to preserve them 
And I, th- in fact, there's even games I not not necessarily adventure game, but just computer games in general that I remember that I don't think I'll ever be able to find again. You know what I mean? Because some of these right. kind of like you know indie adventure game devs now. There was a time before you know huge companies where people were just making computer games, you know, in BASIC or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I feel like I'm never going to find those again. That makes me so sad. <laughs> yeah, I think that so. there is. This is a thing that I am it, – it's going to linger in the back of my brain forever. Mm-hmm. It was a game – it was like a big – it was an adventure game of sorts. I don't know if you had an inventory or not. Um, okay. But I do know it was – there was a bunch of rooms – God, I, I know I remember so little about it. And because game preservation is so bad, I will never see this game again at, to the point where I won't know that it really exists or it's just something in my imagination. But there was oh, no. <laughs> the guy was like 12 pixels. It was just a little guy. I think he had blue <laughs> pants and a white shirt. And uh, he was and like peach skin, right? And he was just uh-huh. like a little guy and he was running around a thing. Um, and I think there was like several episodes of it. This is, as I'm saying it out loud, finally, it's coming back. I think oh, nice. he had a British accent. God, if oh. anybody knows what I'm talking about, please write in. But, you know, it, he <laughs> reminds it reminds me. Remember the Incredible Machine? Yes. Um, remember, uh, there was a little guy in the Incredible Machine called Tim. Yeah. That you could use in your machines. Yeah. I'm trying to find a picture of Tim to make sure that, like what i'm saying makes any sense at all yeah so tim in the game the little man that you could put in your machines yeah is more is more pixels than this character was but again there was this little funny huh. character that was made of just like a dozen pixels or so and he had an english accent and he would and he, it was like these little point and click adventures and they were flash games but now all flash games are gone forever oh that's true oh yeah flash games mm-hmm. that is a, a separate wormhole altogether that's fun. i have i have this app that was created um where somebody as flash was dying they just went and collected all the flash that they yeah. could find on the internet and that's how i've played now okay these games aren't good <laughs> i'm just gonna say that up front <laughs> but Warning. um there was a there was a, a a i guess developer called caramel games i'll look this up that okay y- used to make just tons and tons of point and click adventure games yeah um from like it seems like from like 20 i don't know 13 to 2018 or something like that okay like in that range in that time yeah yeah and all the games were very similar and they were kind of like escape room puzzles and the all the voice actors were the same guy yeah. <laughs> and there was a lot of gross out humor um towards the end there was a lot of like jokes about cancel culture and dumb shit um, oh god <laughs> I know, I know. But it, there was like these Sherlock Holmes games. There was Monster Squad. Uh, I'm mm-hmm. looking at them now. Crazy Dad, Crazy Mom, Crazy Dad Christmas, Crazy Halloween. Uh, yeah, I know. They, these are, uh, I mean, they're absolutely insane. Um, there was, a, there had, they had a series called Vortex Point that had like eight games. And it like clearly was a ripoff of... Um, uh, gravity falls <laughs> yeah that's actually and what comes up when you look up caramel games like vortex point is one of the things that comes up dakota winchester was their indiana jones knockoff and these were like they were like spoofs of these things but also anyway uh i go I, I i'm saying all this just to explain i've played all of these games mm-hmm. because there's you can look it up it's called flashpoint infinity there's this person like there are this group of people who collected all these into a database and like one app yeah and saved all of these games but i'm sure they didn't get everything and i'm sure that we are missing thousands if not millions (laughs) of um flash games that are just gone forever that just is 
awful. And I was like, I remember when things were changing like that. And I was like, is Homestar Runner still going to be up? Because everything, yeah. you know, like Flash animation, there was so much. I mean, that was the whole purpose of Newgrounds at the time, right? There was all yeah. these Flash, little yeah. Flash games and animations. Granted, and... a lot of Newgrounds was like uh, uh, a, a poop escaping a butt, right? <laughs> like a lot of Newgrounds <laughs> was like real fucking horrible amateurish yeah. bullshit but i want to say that the last door started on maybe started on new grounds i there there's a ton of adventure games that were yeah on flash i'm i'm like looking i'm like flipping through the uh flashpoint infinity app right now and i'm seeing like uh there's a game called lemon noir there is um uh I just saw one that was really oh clop. Remember clop? Where that sounds familiar. Yeah, you had to make clop. something walk. You had to make something walk by um, controlling every one of its joints. Yeah. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was that's rough. those games are rough. But I believe Cube Escape started as Flash games, right? Anyway, I, mean, I just I remember the, Oh man, I'm now I'm remembering just all these games. But do you remember there was a game based on The Room? Uh no, the, as in the room, like the as yeah. in the it, bad movie, you're tearing me yeah. apart, Lisa. Yeah, there is. I I feel like that was a Newgrounds game. I'm gonna look it up. I bet. Yeah, it's um, called the Room Tribute, uh, from 2010. And you know, uh, <laughs> uh, brands made games all the time. Mm-hmm. There would be like, oh yeah, here Jurassic Park the Park the Ride online adventure <laughs> <laughs> um you know and then there was all those adult swim games right yeah like there was yeah, a whole yeah, that's at right. the same time all those ags games were happening here's the last door chapter one you're correct um at the same game uh at the same time all those ags games so like adventure game studio also existed and people were right. making games and sharing them on uh on forums and a lot of those don't work anymore either the the trilby series are those ags games correct yes okay i am having a heck of a time getting those to run uh because i think those were made in what 2004 they all run on scum vm now actually oh that's right scum vm always saves the day to be honest (laughs) i always look there first i'm like does it run on scum yet there's no way a listener has gotten this far and doesn't know what scum vm is but in case you are in case you are that (laughs) listener scum vm is a is an application that is meant to like interface between especially old point and click games and modern computers. Uh, So basically, you know, you, if you have the games, you can use this to emulate um, the running conditions for these games. You just play them in, in this scum VM. It's like a a virtual machine, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Almost exclusively for adventure games. I think it has some old, old, or old, old school rpgs on it now too but yeah it's mo- yeah i mean it's called scum i for a reason i assume that's callback to to monkey island and the scum bar right yes because i think yeah. it was initially just for scum games and then they yeah. expanded it to sierra and they've been expanding it ever since and every year there's just more and more games that run on it i think i even gotta like check Grim the updates Fandango's. on that yeah. there might be games i've been trying to play that have been <laughs> updated which would be great yeah, it, it's it's wild. I remember it was just like a year ago or something that okay, uh, they added all the AGS, not all the AGS games, but like AGS compatibility, and many of the games have been added now. Yeah, for sure. How are we gonna how are, how do we end this one? How do we end this one? Okay, uh, how do we start? We were talking about art, so let's end <laughs> by talk. And oh, we were talking about what we don't know about Greek mythology. <laughs> and wrote, like the, how the much of that is going to be in the Roman podcast mythology. though so do you want to talk about what we don't know about what Mesopotamian mythology well, how much do you know about Marduk <laughs> nothing how much do you know about Ashurbanipal nothing <laughs> uh, <laughs> what, what do you know about what do you know about um, Gilgamesh what is it is this Gabriel Knight are you just going to keep asking me what I know about things <laughs> Uh, I weirdly know like a lot about the Epic of Gilgamesh, to be honest. I had to read it for uh, 
uh, world mythology for my humanities course in college a bajillion 84 years ago. I've read it for a world mythology course. I've read it for a literature course. I own three different translations of it because I just find Jeez. it fascinating. I think it's an incredible story. Um, it would make a great adventure game. <laughs> no, it wouldn't. It'd be so <laughs> disappointed and weird. <laughs> It'd be so weird. <laughs> It'd make a very bad adventure game. <laughs> I mean, most of what he does is fight stuff and fuck his friend. You know, it sounds nice. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, all right. Good life. Uh, I'm in. <laughs> <Back in. laughs> uh, all right. Well, this has been a fun chat, Roses. And, always, um, always. I'm glad. I'm glad we got this in, even if we didn't have any focus whatsoever. Oh, uh, we um, we're always pretty focused, though. You'd be surprised. Have you listened to other podcasts? No, I don't listen to any voice besides my own. That's true. Well, what about <laughs> mine? <laughs> Uh, uh, <laughs> it's just kind of a haze. <laughs> just going autopilot when you talk to me. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I have an AI here that uh, <laughs> translates everything you say and just tells me what to respond to. Oh, good. But no, I, I always, I always love talking about adventure games and kind of where what we've played in the past, and yeah, I just I feel very wistful. Yeah, Although wistful's kind of a, is, is wistful a sad word? It's not sad. I, I guess nostalgic is the correct word. Well, nostalgia also is a word that derives mm. from sadness, right? That's like true. Uh, the etymology of nostalgia is a uh, uh, like pain and home, nostos right. and algos, right? Like <laughs> I'm not feeling like homesick. I'm just feeling like. Aw, adventure games. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're Aww. feeling um what's a, yeah, what's a word for good nostalgia? <laughs> <laughs> what are we feeling? Please write us. I I I guarantee there's a word in German for it. There's a word in German for, <laughs> for every yeah. single yeah. Sentimental? Yeah, I, I do I do feel a little sentimental, to be okay. honest with you. Yeah, yeah that's a good yeah. one. That's a good one. All right, Matt, you want to take us out? Got any announcements for us? We're part of the Adventure Game Hotspot Network. So, of course, go check them out. AdventureGameHotspot.com. Also, you know, review us, like us, all the different oh stuff. Oh, my God. Why? <laughs> you get angry at this. Do you not want them to do it? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why I have such a visceral, like, visceral reaction. Uh, I'm going to make you say it from now on as your part. I'm going to say it so sadly. For sighing every time. <laughs> they, they have to do it. We need right, it I'll, to happen. I will say it next time. Okay. <laughs> and I'm going to be like, oh my God. Yeah, you're going to be like, oh my God. <laughs> and also, don't forget to write us at uh, oh, yeah. mattandroses at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I forgot about I forgot yeah. about that. Wow. We almost missed everything. <laughs> uh, well, I guess all I have to say left, um, and I don't know what you'll say back to this, but my, my point is podcast is art. And art is suffer. <laughs> <laughs>